you the power of god i i don't know but there are people god is raising to become mighty vessels i just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ welcome to christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed hallelujah father bless our hearts in the name of jesus please be seated one of the ushers the spirit of the lord is saying i should tell you the set time has come this is one of the ushers just the ushers the set time has come the set time has come this is a prophetic word for one of the ushers the set time has come that's what the lord is saying and when god speaks like this there is a grace that brings and makes for performance one of our ushers the lord is prophesying that your set time has come jeremiah chapter 9 let's get to the word the glory that excels jeremiah chapter 9 we'll start from verse 23 23 thus saith the lord please pay attention let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches next verse but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that he understandeth and knoweth me the Bible starts by listing four categories of people alongside the fact that every of those dimensions carries glory. He starts by saying, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So there is glory in that level of wisdom. That wisdom there is not divine wisdom, Sophia, human wisdom, scientific wisdom, wisdom that is a product of exploring life for a long time. It says, let not, please go back 23, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. When the Bible says to not do something, it means that it is possible to do it. Are we together? That means there is a level of glory that the wisdom of this world can bring. Then he moves to the next level. It says, neither let the mighty man glory in your might. So there is glory in might there are men and women with all kinds of might intellectual might military might and there is a level of glory that you see there number three he says let not the rich man glory in his riches it means there is glory in riches are we together that it is possible for you to be rich and there is a glory there and then he says but let him that glory it so in any case there must be glory but he's only giving you a reference listen carefully he is not saying glory in strength and all of this and he's showing you an excellent dimension that there is glory in the wisdom of men are we together now there is glory in might there is glory in riches however this is the kind and the dimension i want your glory to be a derivative of the fact that you understand and you know me because in understanding and knowing me there is a representation of all these glories you forsake that you ignore the glory that comes with the wisdom of men you ignore the glory that comes with might aside from God. You ignore the glory that comes with riches outside of God. And then you seek to understand and know him. He says there is a glory 
that is in that experience that is surpassing greater than the glory that comes all of these dimensions of glory they are there but he's showing you that there is a glory that excels there is a glory that excels the wisdom of men there is a glory that excels the might of men there is a glory that excels earthly riches he says that glory is a product of an encounter that you understand and you know me that means that if four of us stand we can both emit levels of glory but i can trace the basis of that glory i can know that your glory comes just from earthly riches your glory comes from sophia human wisdom your glory comes from the military might but i can look at a man and know that this one this glory is a product of knowing god is it not written in your bible that the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits the word glory is very important the glory of a thing is a measure of its worth listen carefully in the simplest term the glory of a thing is a measure of its worth a measure of its value a measure of its desirability the more glorious a person and a thing is the more you are desired the more the weight of the value that is placed on you and so imagine with me for instance that all of these dimensions are like gold that you are placing on a scale so you place the glory that comes from earthly wisdom and the scale will measure it you will write it you place the glory that comes with riches and might but then that there is a glory that the scale cannot measure when it comes from knowing God, you drop it, it's a glory that excels. It's an all-surpassing glory. Please pay attention, I'm building something now. So the Bible begins to contrast. Number one, he says it is important that the saints glory, but it tells you what to glory in. Because herein is our Father glorified when you bear much fruit. In your being glorified, God is being glorified. John 17, Jesus said, The hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may give you glory. Meaning an unglorified saint cannot bring glory to the Father. The glory of the Father is in the glory of the saints. Are we together now? That if there is a dimension of glory the saints do not express, it will short circuit the understanding of creation about God. Glorify now thy son, that thy son will bring you glory. Add weight to your son, add desirability. Put something within him that the rich outside you cannot have. Put something within him that the wise outside you cannot have. That when you stand on the scale of destiny is a weight that cannot be measured. The glory that excels. Hmm. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus taught a mystery that I want to connect to this very quickly. His mysteries were captured in his parables. And in one of the parables, he teaches us on the mystery of wineskins. Please give us verse 18, Mark chapter 2. There is a glory that excels. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees and you know and they came home to him and said to him why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast oh dear but thy disciples fast not 19 and Jesus said he's replying a question remember that the foundation of this question was the issue of rituals structures systems keep that in mind so he was challenging Jesus's violation of a system this is the basis for this statement there is a methodology there is a way things were done and now they found out that jesus was routing his system he was not conforming to what they were doing and they they were questioning his authority 
what gave you the audacity to come up with another formula we are used to this this is the ritual but now jesus we see you mentoring your disciples through another route and jesus is replying can the children of the bridegroom or bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them as long as they have the bridegroom with them they cannot fast 20 but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and then they shall fast in those days 21 he says no man now listen he's buttressing on this point now no man also sewed a piece of new cloth on an old garment else the new piece that filled it up take it away from the old and the rent is made worse are we together now next verse and no man put it new wine into old bottles or an old wine skin why else the new wine don't bust the bottles and the wine is spilled and the the bottles will be mad but the new wine must not may be put in a new wine skin listen very carefully Jesus is teaching them something here very powerful and then he now brings this his parables on the cloth and then more importantly the wine skin he's saying that if you put wine skin i hope you know that the wine skin he now calls old was once new don't forget that what he now calls old was by a reference new and now he's saying that if you are bringing new wine that it is not possible to bring new wine and put it in an old wine skin that the effect it would be better to have left the old wine and the old wine skin that if you try to mix them there will be a reaction and that that reaction will make the condition worse listen carefully there is a reason why revivals never last there is a reason why the move of God comes for a while. Revival, revival, revival. People organize programs and for one or two weeks, people feel spiritual. They feel connected. And one month later, everyone has gone back to his ways. The reason is because we continue to violate the condition that makes for new wine to be comfortable. The focus is never on the new wine. He says you attract new wine by doing something to the wine skin. You don't ask new wine to come. Something must happen to the wine skin that automatically attracts new wine. Listen carefully. Wine skin in scripture is symbolic of structures and systems. You have to understand this. It's not only just symbolic of a man. It's symbolic of methodologies and strategies. That for every move of God, there is a pattern and there is a spiritual formation that can contain it and host it. Are we together now? I shared with you in one of the services how that when it came to killing the Philistines, God gave Samson a revelation and he took the dry bone, jaw bone of an ass and he killed the Philistines with it. As soon as he was done, he was asked to throw it. Sometimes you don't throw things because they have stopped working. You throw them because they will not be needed again, although they are still working. The Bible never said the old wine skin were already torn. It could still contain it but that new wine in an old wine skin cannot last every move of God and every dimension of glory has a spiritual formation that you must assume otherwise the glory will not be comfortable around you and it will be wasted this is what Jesus is teaching that anything anything that is new from heaven that is coming the focus is not on what is coming the focus is on the preparation Jimmy shared that scripture powerfully here when it was time for them to experience the glory of God there were conditions he said sanctify yourself one day is not enough two days not enough three days not enough prepare yourself and even at that when they saw the glory they were preparing for they said Moses you go and just talk with God whatever he tells you tell us we will listen 
most people are not prepared for what they pray for because the glory of God listen is one thing to ask and continue to ask one of the reasons why the glory of God may elude certain people the weightiness of his presence it may be that we continue to desire that the new wine comes upon the old wine skin and God says my not giving you is an act of my mercy because there will be a reaction when the new wine comes upon the old wine skin that your condition will be worse than you currently are that means it is possible to dish out revelation and a believer's life starts failing from the day he had that revelation it is not only error that destroys there is a dimension of truth you can bring and from the day the believer received it his life begins to go down because the effect of that new wine on his old wine skin creates room for his own destruction this is not a demon this is not satan this is a spiritual reaction jesus is teaching us here so he's giving us a word of caution that if it is true that you need a new wine skin then you must find out the structure when the glory of God was going to rest upon the tabernacle in the Old Testament at that time the tabernacle was a new wine skin so Bezalel and Aholiab had to receive from God the blueprint the kind of tabernacle that can host the glory they were praying for are we together now they were never to be left to decide God come read your Bible God never comes until a people are prepared by his standards not by their desire not by their cry not by their hunger whenever God wants to come bringing his anointing his grace and all the possibilities contained in him there will be a requirement you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin we're talking about the glory of God here that there is a glory that excels but I'm showing you the technology by which men transit to rise to superior realms. Every old wine was once a new wine. This is what I want you to know. No old wine starts as old wine. The tabernacle, the law was once new wine. The tabernacle in the wilderness was once new wine. But a day came when God said, I'm connecting this story now. They were used to the new wine. They saw the glory that came with the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant. They saw the victories that it brought for them. Now Jesus appears. And then they are saying, Jesus, if you are from God, you must fit into this structure. And he says, I agree it was one a new wineskin, but now I'm bringing in something. Do you have the flexibility and the unashamedness to restructure and adjust your vessel? And sometimes replace it completely so that you can host the new he was speaking to scribes he was speaking to Pharisees when they saw his miracles and they saw the things that he did they looked at their structure and wondered why those structures did not host that thing I hope you know God was the one who instituted their structure but God had left their structure once upon a time John was the new wine skin that was being used the theology that John brought was the most current dealing of the spirit John was in the wilderness and God was giving him mysteries until then there was nobody who could stand as anything newer than John Jesus himself testified that of all the prophets no matter what they saw nobody read John's dimension of glory but John was wise when Jesus came he said behold the lamb and John said look I know that with respect to this I have become an old wine skin let me decrease that he will increase are you seeing that technology I decrease this is the vessel that God is pouring his glory and when you look up to him then you are not ashamed John departed and his disciples were offended because at a point they felt John what are you doing 
you were shining you were the person at the center stage your entire theology was what we built our lives on and right now you are asking us are you trying to say all you have taught us was error and john was trying to say no i'm only showing you that there is another dimension of glory that has come and my structure cannot hold that glory i was a forerunner now that that glory has come follow that glory amazing that john himself didn't follow the glory and not even him was spared john died whereas others were being resurrected there was a provision in a new structure that john could not experience he died in offense he died in pain he died hating jesus he died probing the messiahship of jesus the man who ordained Jesus to ministry, the man who caused that his heavens were open. He said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah or should we seek for another? Notice that every time they fought Jesus, they didn't just fight the miracles, they fought the wineskin, the structure. Why are you coming with another pattern? They caught a woman who was in adultery and there was a structure already that when this woman is caught, you don't discuss, you stone her and immediately Jesus looks at them and creates another order. Listen to me. You cannot put new wineskin, new revelation, new anointing, new glory, old structure that does not have the provision to receive it. The question is to sustain the sacrifice and the flexibility that even if it means to tear the old wine to give way, let me tell you that's not as easy as it sounds. That's why we are here tonight. If it was that easy, many people will carry the glory that excels. The hardest part of the coming of the glory is not its arrival. It is the level of stretching that happens to a man to have the new wine skin that makes for the space that this new glory will come upon. That's why we are here. We can, we can shout and jump and say, greater anointing, oh God. Greater this. Do you know that the level of living is not the same? Every level of glory has its rules and conditions. This is it. So we may be born again, but the spiritual levels and the levels of glory that come out of us will have certain rules. Because of the level God has taken you, he will give you a rule that is only applicable to you on earth. No other person it may not make sense but that is the price to keep the wine skin new and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you i wrote something down here listen that every level of glory has its demands there is a price to pay for every dimension of the glory of god that we seek to have many people think it's just automatic just because jesus died no sir there is a demand for every face and every level of glory The new wine skin is formed when you are willing to subscribe to the terms that make for higher glory. You form the new wine skin by making a decision that Lord, I desire this dimension of your glory. I desire this dimension of your weightiness, your presence upon my life. Now, please listen, listen. Somewhere along this conference, we are going to be doing an impartation but many of us, let me be sincere with you. The reason why so many men of God continue to pray and lay hands on you and they bless you from their heart. You can go around and say, I met Bishop Oedeko, I met Papa Adeboye. Have you met this? Yes, but nothing in your life reflects the glory because there was a repulsion. Their prayer brought the glory, but it met a structure that would not allow it. You see that? You believe that you receive because you fell down. But I am telling you now that your falling down was not your receiving. Look at the strict condition Elisha went through 
to carry a mantle i hope you know it was elijah that was teaching other people they were the students in the school of the spirit yet it was not enough for them to carry the, the bible testifies they were in his school think how much of an angry man elijah was i won't be surprised that elijah slapped elijah was that kind of tamper that caused fire will you want to work with such a person once upon a time elijah was the new wine skin and the wine skin kept looking for a replacement all over he looked at the entire prophets and none of them had the formation none not once and there was a man who kept stretching himself went beyond gilgal went all through and while that was happening elijah was watching elijah continued to frustrate him intentionally and that guy would not be offended look at all the attributes that were preparing him for that mantle then when they cross beyond jordan elijah looks at him and says you are really desperate i i see the formation you are looking like me now the the kind of alignment i i remember this and i know that you are about to receive something and he says what do you want then the man said sir with all due respect i know where you stopped i went more than that i can take twice you could not take twice your own anointing where you stopped i respect it but my i stretch myself beyond the capacity of that level of grace and he said one more test young man the last test was the test of sight the test of sight not just the test of physical endurance all right you have qualified but one last test if it is true that you stretch the way you claim something should have happened to your eyes and so let me see if you really pass the test because anyone who stretches enough for a double portion something should have happened to his eyes it is impossible to say you have stretched like that and your eyes is still blind therefore my dear son if you can see me as i rise and he looked and suddenly the eyes he said i see you oh my father my father the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof listen the anointing came without confusion and he went to jordan he said where is the lord god of elijah he parted it and it parted hither and thither and the moment that happened the prophet saw him and they said the spirit of elijah dot rest on elijah they were so ignorant they didn't even know it was two times it was a double portion graces don't just come anointings don't just come there is a glory that excels listen carefully prosperity does not just come liftings don't just come i tell you the reason why the move of god and the treasures of this kingdom never stay on people it will come for a while and then our lack of structure will fight it and it will go so you find out that churches experience certain moves of the spirit for three weeks strange signs and wonders angelic encounters and then it leaves they never experience it again could this be why sometimes when prophecy comes the results happen slowly and then it lifts because you received the prophecy it came from heaven but the spiritual formation that will allow it says now arise oh god from where you are we have prepared a structure that will make you feel comfortable whether you are in heaven or you are in solomon's temple now arise oh lord it says come to your resting place this is even how demons work they don't just enter anybody they search for a formation that looks like where they are coming from or better than it so when a demon look at a man he knows you are not aligned enough for manipulation so it will continue to create systems around your life that tilt you to be aligned enough then it can come was it not in your bible that when a demon leaves a man when it is returning it doesn't return alone it doesn't just return double portion it gathers seven of its kind and comes for many years i wanted to know the mystery 
behind the very heavy investment of God's presence in others as against others and I gauged it by many parameters and I found out it didn't match I gauged it by many spiritual parameters until I found out that this was the secret now arise O Lord come to your resting place that means consistently from heaven mantles and graces and new levels are searching they continue to move around every service looking for new wineskins and they may not find wineskins here is the answer to why men can be in church for many years and someone will just come and receive the person came with hunger he had stretched himself someone else is standing amen 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 and nothing is happening let me tell you my brothers and my sisters I will show you what to do to the wine skin and then you will see the kind of glory and power that will come upon your life my life changed and the grace of God upon my life took another dimension all of these dimensions you see me walking in they were never there I prayed and said Lord what is the secret thank God for impartation but I knew that mm -mm, impartation is the last step to this thing there is a way why did Elijah have to go through this laborious journey with Elijah why there is a huge price for the glory that excels you want to speak and let things just happen you want God to touch the hearts of men no this thing is not acting my brothers and my sisters it is not even just about praying 10 hours it is not even just about fasting dry fast there is something that must happen from within now arise O oh Lord come to your resting place you and the ark of your might and then we will rejoice as we clothe in your righteousness celebrate I remember some years ago one night I, I will never forget that night I was watching William Branham and tears filled my eyes that night I was so tired I was sleepy but I was watching him and you know the whole documentary on him and I said why do people insult this man you know they make it look like he backslided he left God just because he missed some things here and there there are graces that when you carry I will show you there is you have to ask God to help you stand the heaviness of that grace even you God will have to support you otherwise you will not stand I had a vision I will share with you some visions that I've never shared here during this conference let me finish the William Branham story we're going to pray I remember that night I was looking at this man and for the first time a sense of honor and compassion I said this is an amazing servant of God the humility that came from that man's life versus all the nonsense that ignorant people kept saying I said look at this look at this man of God look at the grace that comes out of this man and something strange happened to me it was like light from my laptop something cold just rested on my head gradually I didn't used to walk in the prophetic here and there maybe word of knowledge this and that here and there and something cold gradually it took more than 30 minutes it was entering me the next meeting I went to it was like a shock that was when I started seeing angelic presence like lights like ribbons and I said what is this that I'm seeing let me tell you mantles are still looking for men the problem is that there are too many old wineskins structures that refuse to bend structures that refuse to adjust One day, I kept praying. I wrote the names of certain fathers of faith. 
that I was praying that God would put upon me the grace that he put upon them and then I had a dream in that dream I was in Canaan land I think then okay they just a few years after they had built uh, let's see no I'm not sure it was more than it wasn't yet up to 10 years since they built the the auditorium there and then I found myself preaching and just like the stage here I was standing you have to just keep your toe just the tip of your toe that's how you stand to preach and the stage was shaking and I couldn't stand well and I said is this how these guys stand to preach that's what I saw in that vision that means all you see is not just standing on stage many people are standing on there are weights there are gracious people carry that the moment you talk about them in the secret that grace was designed because of the weightiness there are extra privileges that come with it you will find out that your heavens will close alone in the secret no demonic assistance just because of the weightiness of it it is true my brothers and my sisters that even among the stars one different from another in glory in glory this that looks small is a deep spiritual secret it's possible to remain at the same level and God sees that you are better off at that level but if it is the glory that excels that you want to receive a dimension of his weightiness you want to add weight to your spiritual life the requirement is not just prayer the requirement is not just bible study i'm going to show you the requirement turn with me please very quickly to second corinthians chapter 4 many of you have not been trained to have regard for the glory of god that comes upon men second corinthians chapter 4 from verse 17 please for our light affliction which is but for a moment what is the affliction doing walk it for us stop stop there is a raw material that trains men the bible calls it affliction i know you don't <laughs> for this hammer that i use work it in me this vessel that affliction is like a hammer that can chisel a man he may not know what is happening but there is a a, a formation happening our light affliction apostle paul is writing that work it for us a what i told you there is a glory that excels if it is that weight of glory you want there is a dimension of affliction that the bible says it is a tool that is used you don't like the nice message i know <laughs> hmm. what do you think makes god to have a covenant with a man not old testament not new testament what do you think empowers that you make a statement and god just honors you reading the bible just praying in the night no sir no sir there are secrets one of them is your volunteering to affliction it was it didn't it say i bear in my he said let no man trouble me i carry a glory that excels and here are the scars that show for it let no demon resist me because i carry a glory that excels and here is the scar that shows you want to be an envoy of his presence you want to host the glory of god you want to host the power of god let me tell you there are some sacrifices if you make in the kingdom god will not allow you make other kinds again forever it is true it is true sir there are men and women because of the sacrifice they've had with god god will never allow them to learn about money again in this life it will never happen it's an exemption for them 
because of what there is an accreditation that happened in that place of pain I always wondered why so many people broke certain principles that I knew that made for certain results and then it looks like life will punish everybody and jump them life will punish everybody and jump them and I said why and God said I am just find out they paid an equivalent of that sacrifice already it is true my brothers and my sisters it is true there is a glory that excels but the bible says for our light affliction which is but for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory next verse it says while we look not at the things what are the things the afflictions the things that are seen but the things that are unseen it says for the things that are seen are temporal temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal romans chapter 8 from verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings you know this is paul writing I hope you know it was the same Paul that wrote to third of the New Testament. When Paul says, I glory in my affliction. Now you understand what he was saying. How do you glory in affliction? Believers. Tell me how you glory in affliction. That a man is in chains and bonds. And he calls it glory. I wish what I were telling you were not true. Was it not because of what Mary was going to carry that all the trouble came upon her life? Mary was an innocent virgin, for God's sake, minding her business, and here comes this young carpenter. You just ask her out. All of a sudden, an angel comes and says, Mary, there is something we are, we are looking for who can carry it. We have been searching other women and they refused. Probably some had the dream and they casted it. Mm, leave me, I want peace in my life. And here comes Mary. Let me tell you, if everyone were available, the angel would not come. It looked like Gabriel had been searching. And finally, he says, let me try this one. We bring you salutation of great joy. And she wondered what salutation. He said, this is what will happen to you. And then the woman says, be it unto me. She thought she was saying, let me be pregnant. No. The process that will allow me to carry the word for nine months, be it unto me. From that day, Mary got in trouble to the point that Joseph was saying, Madam, I don't know what is it that happened between you and this ghost. I don't know which rabbi you are calling an angel, but I, I won't embarrass you, but me, I'm going. What happens when things start going down and it started the day God spoke to you? You were minding your business and it looked like you were better off. The day a voice came, you will be a mighty man of God. From that day, your life, it looks like God. What I was minding myself. I was living a happy, quiet, wonderful life. Then you go to lie down and sleep and you are seeing a generation and you say, God, please, leave my peace. I want, my plan is to live a nice life. This is the price for carrying the burden of a generation. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. I preached a message years ago called the fullness of affliction. And several people said all kinds of things against the message. And I said, oh dear. God has an economy. God has a non-negotiable system. This is the reason why he loves everybody, but not everybody carries the same weight of glory. 
my brothers and my sisters the glory of god upon a man is not dependent on his predetermined counsel is how much you are willing to be stretched until you are reformed like the potter sometimes you will need to smash that clay again and start building you built it before into a vessel and then you will smash it back and that clay is you hallelujah it's a very very huge sacrifice to carry the glory of God the weightiness of his presence most times we admire the results that we see but let me tell you my brothers and my sisters behind the veil what you see there is the blood and the tears that came with lifting this weight it's a heavy weight a far more exceeding weight of glory a far more exceeding weight of glory hallelujah that you speak to a man and his life does not change you go back to god and say lord why now i spoke and god says no there is a glory level there is there not every part of the mountain delivers the same result it says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord is a journey if an aircraft will not keep you at the top of the hill you will walk there were five thousand men aside women and children who climb up the mountain and they were privy to hear certain things that others did not hear the way to the throne is the cross the way to the throne is the cross you will never get to the throne ignoring the cross the only ladder that you will use to climb the throne of destiny is the cross where God will give you a governmental grace to speak over nations you become Beulah and Hephzibah the desire of nations notice in the parable of the talents do you know the real blessing that happened to them it was not well done good and fit. i used to think he was well done good and faithful servant until one day the spirit of the lord says study it and i found out well done good and faithful servant was a pattern of their back certain portions were up, were given to them territorial influences that was the blessing the labor of doing something with what they were given qualified them for these dimensions at every level at every level please listen to me carefully at every level there is a demand there is a level of sacrifice there is a level of real sacrifice that makes for certain glories but Paul said compared to the glory that that level delivers the sacrifice can be called a light affliction second Corinthians chapter 3 we are going to pray from verse 9 and 10 it says for if the ministration of condemnation talking about the law now carried some glory in it he said much more that the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory next verse he says for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels that there is a level you can walk with God my brothers and my sisters and through this sacrifice of remolding yourself to become a new wine skin that God will put a dimension of his glory that when you look back what you used to call glory that it is not glory in this respect a level of signs and wonders a level of the performance of God's word a level of increase and grace a level of prosperity the wealth of the kingdom a level of spiritual illumination it comes by that track record of pain and sacrifice 
sacrifice the weightiness of God's glory finding vessels that can fit it the weightiness of God's power finding vessels that can receive it the weightiness of the spirit of revelation finding men there are times that it comes close and you fall it you can't even host it first and then it goes back waiting for you to truly become that vessel it says but we all like living stones we are being chiseled and built into a spiritual house a house that can host god there are many things in my life today i would have prayed for for so long to come but sometimes just a desire in my heart is enough to bring it the secret is that when you contend for the glory that excels please hear me if you're a man of god here hear me twice what we call ministry now in the next five years many people will be frustrated because there are people pressing into these dimensions genuinely there are people that desires tangibility substance of the spirit they are the ones who will become the desire of nations and many others will pale and fade in glory this is not backsliding this is that god has begun something it's a new order and like john the baptist and like the scribes you may scrounge around for relevance but the light now is on jesus the question therefore is are you willing to subscribe to the demands demands of lifestyle demands of covenant listen it will cost you everything the price for all of god is all of you let me say it again the price for all of god is all of you write it media let the world lend this the price for god's head is not all of you the price for god's hand is not all of you the price for god's heart and all of him is all of you that's why we can see certain dimensions you just want the wisdom of god or some dimensions of his creativity but not all of him if you want to host god then all of you must be beaten like the potter with the clay it's not a gospel that many people like nobody likes suffering nobody likes affliction we were not designed that way that's why it's a sacrifice There is a glory that excels but it will come upon vessels that have been worked on changed he says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty then it says we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a glass we are changed you know it looks like once you are just looking you are being changed ask elijah it was not just looking like it was saying there is a dynamics of death that works in you so that life will work in other people let me tell you this 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 thing i'm teaching you is a is a master mystery even in the occult and those who practice all of these things they are the level of glory in quote if i will use that word is corresponding to the, the level of tremendous sacrifice i remember reading a book about a, a somebody who would receive some kind of strange power and the condition was to fast non-stop for 150 days if you miss one day you start afresh you don't continue you fast to a point that you don't know whether you have eaten or not there is your body has lost the ability to tell you whether you are full or you are hungry so god will want to take you to certain realms and god will now say oh pastor alpha because of what i'm about to do for the next five months i will need every 12 to 3 a.m of your time not three to five regardless of what the event is the demand is 12 o'clock to 3 the next six months think about it if you are interested let me know you will be free from 9 to 11 that's not the timing god gave you you will even be free from 4 till forever you will find out that you will be so 
tired by 11 45 you don't know if you are standing or sitting but you remember that our light affliction you may look stupid see it's difficult to do these things when you have people that love you they will pity you too much to allow you continue the pain of what you go through it will attract their sympathy that's why abraham told the servants wait here i have to go alone with my sacrifice if those servants were on the mountain they will fight abraham and bring isaac down there are certain things when god wants to do in your life you will, you will have to agree with him that you will be alone in this so that he can do with you what he wants because the innocence and the humanity of men sometimes will interrupt the process if you're married and you see your husband eating once a week and acting like a strange man one day you'll be tired you will close the door and sit down there and start crying and whether he's, he's serious with God or not the compassion that comes from that union will make him say God whatever it is please let me just let me just let me just subscribe to the demands of my wife what do you think made John the greatest prophet have you studied John's life how much of his life was in public view look at how John was born from that time at least for Jesus we saw what happened the first 12 years what happened to the next 18 years of Jesus is something you should find out because the Bible does not tell us any other thing again about Jesus from age 12 until 30 we see a man coming what happened for those 18 years what happened to the 19 years of Paul in the wilderness of Arabia what happened to the 40 years of Moses at the backside of the mountain let me show you that this is consistent with men who carry glory it is not new it didn't start now are we together john the baptist the bible just shows us that there is an adult in the wilderness who was given a, a what i would call a wicked prescription there was meat those days there was fish those days there was wine those days but he dressed in camel skin and then he was in the wilderness and the only food that he was allowed to eat was locusts and wild honey was it not the prophet that was told to sleep on one side for one year i don't know if you don't read your bibles did you read about the prophet who ate animal dung for one year I tell you why our generation is powerless we are noisy people but there's no power this is it we hate the sacrificial dimension that brings the glory let him that glory and glory in this that he knoweth me he understands my way and because of his subscribing to my patterns he can carry a glory that is greater than the glory of the wise greater than the glory of the strong greater than the glory of the rich there are men let me tell you i believe that there are people who will open up their hearts and say lord i am willing let's go this journey i am willing i am willing you know most times we sing songs of surrender we just sing them as special numbers i want you now to think because god answers those prayers use me oh god i'm available and god says i'm listening keep talking do with me anything you want to do uh, have you had that kind of prayer god says thank you this is all i've been asking you it's a dangerous prayer to say do with me what you want it's even dangerous to sing it do with me what you want do with me what you want you study the scapegoat that was taken malhandled and taken everywhere he was led like a sheep to the slaughter do with me what you want lord my life is yours do with me what you want and god says okay i look at you and i need to chisel here and here can i go on and you say lord i've said do with me what you want the first hammer touching you, you say god is this it no 
I changed my mind. Is it by force? I'm already born again. God says, it's not by force. But then the glory you seek, do not be angry when you see it on another person. So many men of God can be here. But there is glory that excels corresponding to the spiritual sacrifices let me tell you this is a non-negotiable condition there are cups you don't pray to pass you you obtain the grace to drink them he said grant that you know when you have conquered caesar etc etc let me sit at your left and right the mother of james and john was asking jesus didn't say there is no vacancy he said you want to see close to me here is the condition one can you drink of my cup internal and can you be baptized with my baptism the woman didn't answer it for the children john would later answer it and he paid for it he really did he was at the isle of patmos but that guy had so pressed into these things that hot oil had no effect on him and peronero said what do we do with this guy now we have tried to roast him in oil it didn't work and they banished him to an isle called patmos these are the men the bible says the earth is not worthy of there is a reason why the earth is not worthy they walked sometimes like fugitives and vagabonds looking for a city whose builder and maker is the lord they so pressed into these things for some of them life made no sense again take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord you have anoint my everything use my everything i release my everything you have my everything say take all of me all of me lord you have my everything take all of me all of me lord I thought Jesus being the son of God, Jakes, should, should exempt him from this pattern. Why will the son of God be in the wilderness? Talk to me, believers. The son of God left heaven, born of the spirit. It didn't change the pattern. As soon as Jesus came out of the water, it was not a demon that drove him. There are many times what drives you to that wilderness is not always Satan. The spirit didn't speak. He drove him to the wilderness. Notice that every time these men were in these places, they were alone. It's not a corporate thing. It's not a husband and wife thing. It's not a classmate. It's not a roommate thing. It is you and God and your destiny. This is the price it takes to be trusted with the keys of a generation. This is the price it takes to become the face of God to a generation. It's not by voting. It's not by popularity census. It's not by likes and shares. It's a testament of a sacrifice in the spirit. Known by both God and demons. Believers, either we are just playing games and we truly do not desire to be the carriers of this glory or someone here will be willing to pray. Listen, let me tell you, you would think the sacrifice to host God's glory is hard until you see the alternative. The alternative is a miserable life of guessing left, right and center with your destiny shattered and you are, you are a victim of just anything. Jesus paid the price once. And he was ready by this time many years ago jesus was in hell hellfire jesus hellfire jesus hades the place of the dead and the father was watching and all these demons were upon their own creator 
the word of God that proceeded. Ah, but though weeping endures for a night, Shabalakabarakosia. One thing I know is that affliction does not remain forever. It has an expiry date. When the legal claims of justice were made, Paul reveals to us by the Spirit that Jesus made a public show of them, triumphing over them. And one of the things he got in hell, so there can be keys in hell, and you will need to go down to hell to get some keys. Sometimes you will need to go down to come up with keys. Jesus descended before he ascended. So you will rise up by going down. Are we together now? And he collected the keys. And in Revelations he said, I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. The coronation service only happened when he went through this. We are going to pray tonight. There is a glory that excels. I bring you a very powerful mystery. The glory that excels. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech thee, brethren. Who is he talking to? Brethren. Not unbelievers. I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Offer, offer your bodies as a, not a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Let me tell you what that means. A sacrifice that remains a sacrifice. When a sacrifice dies, it stops being a sacrifice. It's over. The real sacrifice was the life of that object. So when the life goes, there's no more sacrifice. It is the process of extracting life from that thing that is the sacrifice. Now he says you are a sacrifice. You are alive. But it's a posture you will continue to take. Holy and acceptable unto God. And he says it's your reasonable act of worship. I have found this key from the day i found this key i stopped being afraid of pain i stopped being afraid of sacrifice i became friends with it and i found out that in that darkness that's where light comes from god who had commanded light to shine out of darkness not into darkness out of darkness darkness is the mother that gives birth to light and the evening came and the morning and the evening came and the morning let me encourage you listen to me listen to me very carefully be careful so that you don't judge things from the standpoint of men there are certain things that you may be passing through that you may think these things are happening just because of unbelief i told you that faith doesn't always receive it also takes faith to release you lose things too by faith by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice there were women who their children died and instead of them to raise them back they said no problem let them go and the bible calls it faith read it it's not everybody who brought their child back to life that were called men of faith others died Do you know why plants grow? Because they subscribe to this same principle. Death and glory. When you carry a seed and throw it on the earth, what happens? You studied agri. What happens? The life is in the death, Jakes. You come back after two days. If you open it, you will see that there is no more beauty. There is no beauty in the grave. There is no comeliness. There is only the death that brings resurrection. And notice what happens. The first thing that happens is some process of decay and even degradation. And then out of the rottenness, it begins to open. It's deshaping as bad as it is. It's making room.
for something new and sometimes it can be so bad that part of the old one will come out too with a new one and you can look at it and know this is the dead seed and this is the one that grows I wish I can tell you the glory of God comes just by speaking and saying receive grace there are you want to be given the keys of a nation my brother and my sister there is a track record there is a scar there is a testament of death that must happen i presume we're going to pray tonight because it looks like we're in a funeral service you know what you do in a funeral service you dig the ground and you carry the dead body and throw it in but when you throw the body in the funeral service you don't expect it to come out but what we're engaging tonight is a mystery that when you are thrown in the grave then you are ready to come out after a few days of silence suddenly suddenly you begin to shoot against gravity with another life and that small tiny seed will now become a tree that birds will come and nest they will be grateful that you paid the price every food you eat today is because a seed volunteered to die listen to me carefully if seeds stop dying you stop rising too the reason why we continue to live is because there are seeds that are dying they died last year the moment rain starts falling isn't it amazing that when rain starts falling that's the right time for the seed to die seeds die during rain rain that should give life but that's when seeds die and then life comes from it we're going to pray in the next 10 minutes it's going to be a general prayer before i lead you find whatever corner outside this is you and god just play worship for us and you're going to say lord the death that must turn me into a new wineskin let it happen to me tonight the death that must happen oh god for the glory that this generation is waiting for don't be afraid the sacrifice Lord, you are calling me to be a prophet to the nations. But there is a level of death. Please pray. This is between you and God. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy love. Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hey, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Shalaba kaparu sada balanda katapas kedeba. Pray. Pray. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. Whosoever saves his life shall lose it. But whoever loses it for my sake will gain it. We gain things in this kingdom by losing them. 
Ala baranda zana kaparuza seketazi ana kaparuza sia. Ina balana ba, ina na na na, ina na na na, ina na na na. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Are there people praying tonight? Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Yeah. Breathe on me. Walk through me, yeah. live through me. Oh, come with the refiner's fire. 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 As the deer pants after the water brook, find a generation, my king. Find a generation that desires you more than life, more than wisdom, more than money, more than power. Find for yourself a bride adorned in her beauty. Yeah, 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 everything turn me oh god to the wine skin that will host your power in this generation turn me oh god to the wine skin that will host the end time anointing for miracles for wealth for signs for wonders Come in, I'm not 
kumi na nakane Yeshua Hamashiach kumi na nakane Yeshua Hamashiach kumi na nakane kumi na nakane kumi na nakane Come in Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na nakane Yeshua Hamashiach Komi na nakane Two or three more minutes But in a great house there are vessels of gold and of silver, of wood and of clay. Some are unto honor and others are unto dishonor. It belongs to you. Hey. Oh, me, na, na. Yeshua, I'm a Yeshua, I'm a Yeshua, Yeshu Hamashiach Komina Nakane Yeshua Komina Nakane You see, my brothers and my sisters, one of the assignments of fire, the primary purpose of fire was not just for demons it was for the saints it is the fire of the holy spirit it's not just holy ghost fire demons the fire not only refines not only purifies it can melt completely and then remold again it is not every time the fire comes to just purify sometimes that whole vessel needs to melt down for something new to come it is not every time god comes to adjust the old 
sometimes he comes to immerse you into his fire then remold you as something that has never been before Yeshua Hamashia Komina Nakale Yeshua I like you tonight to pray Lord whatever took your place in my life please return to your resting place is someone praying tonight I don't know how it got there but in this season arise majesty return to your resting place hey, hey, hey. Arise, my God, return to your place of rest. Yeshua, Hamashia, Omina Nakane, Yeshua, Hamashia. For some of us, is friends, some of us, is the obsession to succeed some of us is the obsession to be in ministry whatever has taken its place please dethrone it this night dethrone it this night for some of us is money that took its place reputation ego revelation the quest for the anointing in this season let me tell you the new wine of the spirit is moving from nation to nation from continent to continent finding the vessels that have the space there are all kinds of mantles graces that have not been seen before but they are searching for a new wine skin you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin you cannot put a new prophetic wine in an old prophetic wine skin a new apostolic wine in an old apostolic wine skin a new territorial wine in an old territorial wine skin let us leave the old and press for the new press for the new press for the new pray just one more minute and then we'll pray corporately that's why we came tonight without new wine you cannot have the new songs without new wine you cannot have the new sermons you will keep recycling the old copying from man of god to man of god it will take new wine to understand the rhythm of the spirit hallelujah praise the lord listen to me we have a few more minutes just a few minutes and then we'll stop acts chapter 26 and verse 22 there are times in your life listen where because of the kind of glory that is coming no matter how you release yourself you will still not have the capacity you will need to cry for an assistance from heaven 
it says having therefore obtained help of god i continue unto this day the reason i'm still standing from glory to glory i saturated my effort at a point but haven't obtained help from god i continue to this day haven't obtained help from god in the apostolic ministry in the prophetic ministry in the pursuits to bring the wealth of the kingdom to the saints in the pursuit to doing this and that whatever it is there are times when you stretch yourself to the limit and it still cannot make for the size of the glory you will need to turn to the helper of zion it says heaven therefore obtained help of god i continue it takes the help of god to keep going there are times you will reach your elastic limit you will stretch and break to pieces you will still not meet god's standard if someone ready to cry for help from heaven lord assist me assist me let 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 the divine help the alignment it will take to command the wealth of the kingdom in this season lord assist me there is only so much i can do the alignment that will be required to carry the apostolic and the prophetic grace i cry for help having obtained help from god i continue god is the helper of men god can help you he can help you rise he can help you stand he can help you reign he can help you conquer he has not stopped being the helper the holy spirit is called the helper hallelujah hallelujah please pair yourselves in twos if you can just hold someone those under the anointing or just alone just leave them but hold your hands you are going to cry to heaven agreeing with that person say lord a superior realm of results a new dimension of grace glory that is all encompassing i receive it agree 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 with somebody pray outside pray those online pray this is the season oh god of the glory that excels in ministry in business the glory that excels the glory that excels the weightiness, the desirability that excels, that I become the desire of nations, I become the desire of kings. Please pray. Rapa papa ruto totosh endere ketosh kelebash rakata paruto shobregede prato sosi dabiash e prakato sesesekata gomba ruda sobregede balaba em prokoto shekete lebarash alleluia alleluia Psalm 45, verse 12. I believe it is. The Lord just put it in my heart. This is the level that God is taking us to. I hope you remember the teaching I did about Tyre and Sidon. The marketplace of the earth. Where the exchange is made. It says, and the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. He says, even the rich among the people 
shall entreat your favor there is an investment of the spirit that comes upon your life listen i want to show you how this relates to extraordinary fruitfulness there are realms where you will not beg and search for your sacrifice and your investment will cause nobles to come with what you would have looked for the daughter of tyre will come with a gift the gift you would have been searching for and then the rich among the people not the poor there is a grace because you left looking for the glory of wealth to seek his face he will cause those who have the glory of the wealth to come to entreat your favor listen that means wealth is not favor because there is a favor that even the rich are looking for what is it they are not coming to just look at you there is something money cannot buy the rich will entreat your favor they will come to you and it will be a privilege to give them audience I like you to pray and say Lord on account of the glory you are putting upon my life even in this season let the daughter of Tyre begin to come with her gift and let the kings of these systems come with their treasures to entreat my favor please lift your voice and pray pray with understanding pray with understanding because i have subscribed to the glory that comes from your face not the glory that comes from wealth not the glory that comes from human wisdom not the glory that comes from human might the glory that comes from knowing you let the daughter of tyre come with her gift let the nobles of the earth begin to entreat my favor pray for koinonia in this season kings coming to entreat your favor hallelujah the bible says that a time will come when seven virgins it was a prophetic statement seven virgins will hold on to one man that spiritual jew they are not holding on to him just because he's handsome there is something that the tribe he comes from carries and seven dimensions that have not been seen come to you and say we want to be part of your life we want to be featured in your destiny such a force of attraction such a force of attraction dimensions that have never been seen they will come and latch on to you father whatever is for me in this season by the grace you are putting on my life it must be attracted to me in this season lift your voice and pray like a believer you are placing an anointing you are placing a grace and a glory you are my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory you are my glory you are my inheritance hallelujah hallelujah time will fail me to share with you the testimonies of the level of ease that your life will step into when you truly carry the glory of God the glory of God is a voice it can speak it can speak to kings that the things you once desired will come to you at a platter because his glory is upon you he says arise shine 
for your light has come not just that the glory of the Lord is risen upon you the glory that excels this is the glory that will humble the arrogance of the kings of the earth if all you look for is money you will be like them if all you look for is human scientific wisdom you will be like them if all you look for is human systems of fortification but press for his face understand his ways and let him invest upon you a glory that excels and you will watch with wonder the way God will draw glory out of your life there are new and strange kinds of anointings that are coming upon the body of Christ there are new and strange dimensions of the workings of the spirit as has never been seen the times and the seasons already signify it and our own is just to say maranatha come lord come with all of these things come come the body of christ is stepping into certain offices certain levels of spiritual possibilities that Micah for prophecy of the church ascending we will humble the pride of kings the church is not a nuisance to civilization no God is giving us a voice that cannot be silenced a voice that not the rich will ignore the poor will not ignore politicians will not ignore but our price is to become the new wine skin that can carry that new wine and when the new wine finds a resting place then there is no limit to what you can do listen let me tell you this the law of the mind is an irrefutable principle if you must command results no matter how spiritual you are your life will eventually be a reflection of your understanding your life your physical environment will inevitably be a reflection of your understanding may not happen immediately but over a given period of time it is safe to say your experience the sum total of your experiences spiritually financially intellectually sociologically is a reflection of both your paradigm and your understanding if you lack money forever it is because there is an understanding you do not have if you are fighting with everybody forever there is an understanding you do not have are we together there can be momentary failures and setbacks agreed but when over a long period of time your experiences are the same is proof that your mindset is delivering that result say amen numbers chapter 13 we are reading from verse 25 to 33 this was the encounter of moses and the 12 spies listen and they returned from searching the land after 40 days we are reading to 33 and they went and came to moses these are the people now and aaron and to the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word to them listen and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told them and said we came unto the land whither thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is an evidence this is the fruit of it nevertheless listen this is a mindset speaking now everyone's communication is a window into your understanding you can fake it for a while but with time you will speak your true convictions nevertheless this is a faulty mindset interrupting the word of god the people that dwelleth in the land and the cities are walled and are very great and moreover we saw the children of anak there the amalekites dwell in the land of the south the hittites and the jebusites and the amorites dwell in the mountains and the canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of jordan and caleb said kai keep quiet what is all this all you people are just bringing negative was i not there with you we saw it we just brought the fruits and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said Moses as far as I'm concerned 
this is doable let us go up at once and possess it why for we are well able someone prophesied to yourself i am well able say it again i am well able he said we are able to overcome in other words i'm not refusing it's a challenge he didn't say i'm able to go through it no you don't deny the real boy say we are able there is capacity within us to bring those giants down hallelujah this is the power of a transformed mind a man sits down and prophesies doom to himself because of his mindset i can't make it i am from kaduna state i am from plateau state i am from benway i am from kogi people from our family don't rise is a reflection of your understanding 31 but the men that were up with him said we be not able to go against the people why for they are they've not fought oh. they are, they fought in their minds and were defeated already the result of their defeat was that for we they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report listen now what kind of report poor thinking will always make a man communicate what god calls an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of israel saying the land though we have gone through gone to search it a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature the last verse and there we saw the giants the sons of anak which come of the giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers and so we were in their sight. The Anakims never say, Hey, grasshopper. The people call themselves grasshoppers. The same way you call yourself um, a weak failure. The same way you call yourself all kinds of things. There is a price to pay to produce extraordinary results. Let me tell you, nobody is born with a transformed mind. Transformation is a spiritual investment. In case you see certain people confident and commanding results again and again, it is nobody is transformed by default, ladies and gentlemen. It is the labor dimension of the world that brings us to a point where we adjust our understanding. We've done many teachings aimed at building our mindsets and our understanding. I've taught us how paradigms are formed. The first way paradigms are formed uh, through our cultural backgrounds. We come from different cultures and then our environmental conditioning. We've lived among people who have been poor and broke. We have lived among people who have little or no respect for spiritual things. We have lived among people who do not value the power of the word of God. And unconsciously we have imbibed their way of life and their way of thinking as a paradigm, a set of belief, a plane of interpreting things. Your reality is interpreted by your perspective. And if you do not allow the word of God alter your perspective, you will fail in life in a way that you cannot imagine. Listen, I don't care what physical effort you are exerting. Your life will eventually be a reflection of your mindset. There are many people who have failed before they started. It was very clear from their mindset and their thinking that they were not going to make it so they were not surprised when they failed it was just a confirmation of a defeat that had been in their minds are we together we were like grasshoppers so they called themselves the bible tells us how to think philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise do what thinking and wishing are two different things wishing is just mesmerizing on a result that you will never happen in your life but thinking is constructing your mind your understanding many people do not think well they don't even think at all and if they do they think on negative things listen to me much more than your physical activity 
focus on making sure that your mindset has been constructed to produce victory are we together you were insulted growing up you probably were abused growing up and it put something in your mind about men and you keep saying every man is a devil every man is no not every man is a devil in your world and based on your experience all the people you have encountered are bad but why don't you expand your horizon how about prosperity there are so many people when you tell them will you prosper they say when i read what <laughs> when i read what because a society has programmed your mind that your wealth is entirely dependent on just what you studied so people make they go out of their way to do malpractice because they hope that by so doing it will give them an edge correct what do you believe about yourself what do you believe about God what do you believe about life you've heard me say it again and again it never ceases to amaze me those who hang themselves or, co or commit suicide I don't think I hate myself that much I understand quarreling myself but to hang yourself is um is, is quite you must be assisted by a spirit you become a reflection a physical reflection of your most dominant thoughts the thoughts that construct your understanding eventually become your life bring me someone who is as weak and beggarly and as villager as anything provided that person's heart is open to receive and learn give me six months with that person of thorough upgrading of his mind i'm not talking of business i'm not talking of whatever just allow me to change and alter that person's mind if i never see that person in my life again i can tell you staking my life that that person will be a success regardless of what his life is at that moment now here is the reverse accumulate a lot of physical things to hide the true state of your mind your understanding will take them away from your life until you look like what you believe are we together now let's do a little experiment look up don't feel bad how many of you have noticed that certain financial blessings only come at certain levels you never cross thirty thousand mark if somebody blesses you with 200,000, it will finish and return back to that range. It, your understanding pegged you like the thermostat of an iron. You know how an iron is? You program it to be this hot. When it gets there, what happens? It breaks. That's it. There are people who will never cross 100,000. Give them one million. They will laugh only for one week. That money, the, the behavioral patterns that come from faulty thinking will alter their behavior and make them act in a way and manner that reduces them back to the mindset of those who are 100,000 allocators. So it's not enough to just claim and say, I'm a millionaire. There is an understanding that resonates with that level of living and you must upgrade in your mind. It's like resonance in physics. Remember? those who are science-based there's something called resonance in physics that when you hit a tuning fork is that true at a particular frequency every other object within that environment that is the same frequency without touching it starts resonating that's how it is every result you have in the spirit has a spiritual frequency mental level that calls it when you want a result that is higher than your level of thinking it cannot resonate to it so your mindset must rise let me tell you when it gets there it will come in a heartbeat forget about the physical activities that act themselves to manifest it in your life that's that's little issue but we focus on who will bless me and how it will come that's that's not the issue just settle it in your mind you have programmed yourself truly to be successful when you want to know the true secret behind a man's result, don't look at the physical result. Understudy the understanding of that man. You see that? You get blessed from successful people, not just by benefiting from the result of their success. Unfortunately, that's what mediocres do. They are obsessed by the result. The tie, the shoe, the watch, the car the um, anointing the miracles wheelchair no there is an understanding that helps that man to partner with the holy spirit so that that kind of result be produced 
when you have that construction then you are ready for victory the price of mental transformation are you still living like your yesterday and expecting tomorrow's result it doesn't work that way sir you will never never be able to receive results at the mental state that brought the challenge that has pegged you let me tell you what challenges are challenges are a proof that your current level of understanding has reached its expiry level the moment you are confronted with an, a supposedly unsurmountable challenge is a proof to you i teach the school of ministry students that challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i am there and i am real but your mental state now cannot take you there challenges are a letter from your future to you saying i exist i am real but you will not arrive there with your current level of understanding i am passionate about god exposing my area of ignorance it doesn't embarrass me some of us are so egocentric that the moment you are aware that there is need for upgrade in an area it embarrasses us you must be flexible enough to admit that where i am is a reflection of something i do not know are we together do you believe this apostle i don't have friends everybody hates me say lie there is something about your understanding that keeps creating that reality apostle money comes and it disappears yes there can be demonic issues but the demons don't just come and act foolishly they act upon a mindset that can host them the day your mindset becomes hostile to their presence that's the day you break free that's why true deliverance after casting out the demons there must be a reconstruction of your understanding to make your environment no longer conducive for the activity of demon space it is almost vain to lay hands and cast out demons and leave the same mindset that brought them you are only recycling a journey of endless suffering that's why when demons find out that a particular man of god does not have intelligence enough to holistically secure people's deliverance the demons are in a hurry to leave they mock you before you raise your hand they go knowing that their access point is still there the door is open are we together something about your thinking is responsible for your limitation there is a way africa thinks we have subsistent thinking there is a way men of god think that don't give them results there is a way they think that they get results please every time you see a man of god a system a businessman whatever commanding results don't enjoy the flamboyancy of the physical results but if you really want to receive you must be able to labor to buy into their understanding so the bible says this let this mind permit this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 permit this mindset this thinking this construction this set of understanding to be in you that was also in christ jesus and then things will respond to you the same way they responded to jesus born around a manger still didn't matter upgraded his mind 30 years he was to live 33 and a half years and he spent over 90 percent of his life committing to development and in three years he did something that through eternity will not recover from listen listen hear this advice never be in a rush to manifest physical results in your life don't be in a rush to start business someone met me one time and said sir what the way you are looking at me i don't know what i meant prophetically or physically he said what business do you think i can do i said none you will fail in every business you do no matter how simple it is and this is the reason it's not because you are lazy it is because you do not get the understanding of a prosperous person by default sincerity is one of the seeds for greatness so you may be sincere it's like someone who is very sincere wants to transport you from one place to the other but cannot drive will his sincerity take you there as well-meaning as that person is it's not if you die it's when that car will capsize. don't labor to show physical results 
you try to buy a shoe of 100,000 to make a statement, I guarantee you, your carelessness and your wrong thinking is going to spoil that shoe. You'll be surprised that you'll never kick it on a wall, but in one month, the shoe will open up. Something about your wrong belief will mount pressure on that state. Your mind is saying it's a lie. Your physical realm is not agreeing with your mental realm. Something will happen. I've given you an analogy again and again. Take a poor person, take someone who is one of the least workers in any business organization or any company, put him in the director's office for two weeks. Don't tell him anything. Just put him there and say, you have unlimited access to this office. Do you know what he will do? Number one, he's going to steal. Are you seeing the mindset? He will steal because he knows for sure that he's only there for a short time. Number two, he will not clean and arrange the place. What can I get? So things the mediocre. What can I get? Not what can I give? He will sit down, watch television, drink all the juice in the fridge, snap himself, take selfies, and then try to, what can I steal? Oh, there's one carton of water. If I take five, nobody will know. That's a mediocre. That's the reason why he will remain where he is. In two weeks, he will turn that office into his mindset. But take a great man to a room that is messy cobwebs everywhere and he sits down his mindset refuses and say no this is not you whoever has your mindset should sweep the room and so he sweeps the room whoever has the mindset should clean the room in five days you come back and see the same room no cobwebs he would have bought a rug to put there as at the time he was deciding he didn't have money but his mindset told him how it will come is the last the most important thing is to plan. There is power when you set goals. This is a renewed mind. A poor man will say, I beg this Nigeria, I don't have any father anywhere and remain there. After one year, he has not been able to buy a rock. Something about our understanding is responsible for the way we are. Is that true? I look at myself and I look at the dimensions God wants to take me and I look at many things I do not know that is responsible for my current level of results and so I continue to search find out if I know what Folorun Shah Lakija knows then I will be a billionaire in dollars correct listen respect results don't trivialize results results are not luck especially predictable results predictable result time is a revealer of the accuracy of your convictions when you see a result that is sustained it was based on laws it wasn't based on magic i can dash you one million but you cannot become a millionaire for five years by mistake no sir it's a lie i can lay hands on you temporarily and you can even lay hands on someone with wheelchair and leave the person but brothers and sisters you will not organize crusades for two years non-stop when intrinsically you have not received that grace the bible never said the donkey talked forever he talked for a moment and his mouth was shut the bible never said the rod bordered forever psalm 78 verse 41 a scripture that has become a national anthem in this place it said but they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they were in the wilderness and they limited him can god make a way can god make a way can god make a way the bible says they limited him as mighty as god is brothers and sisters we can limit him through our understanding we can limit him someone met me one time and said apostle God doesn't want to encourage me to love. I said, what's the meaning of that? He said, I've told God I want to buy a Dix Bible. I've told God I don't even want clothes for myself. Just spiritual items, messages, anointing oil, all these kind of things. And God, nobody is even help. And I said, show me the paper where you wrote them down. Show me the scripture you, at, you, you put on them. And he said, no, I don't have anything. I said, so if I were God, I would do the same thing. Show me the paper. Where have you gone to the market to find out how much anointing oil is? That's a proof of faith. It's a sign that you know it will come. Faith is conviction and the action you take based on that conviction. Are we together? Yes. 
Let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith. They are vague in their expectations. Vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come. The Bible says, give us. He told you who to give. Number two, he says, this day, then, what our daily bread? Give us this day our daily bread. Specificity is very important in manifesting faith. So that when the result comes, you are sure that this is what I release my faith for. Is God speaking to us? When you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation, you have only flattered yourself. It's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen, especially for we who are young. I know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show. Uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now. You can't even buy a nice jean. And so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into. And we keep, you notice that you keep rising up and falling rising up and falling your physic you try to fake it your mindset brings you back that's what happened to many of our loved ones i've told people why fake something that can be real you don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name. There's no name on it. You just bought it somewhere. Don't allow that to disturb you. If you can take the word of God. The beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space. Continue to upgrade yourself. In the name of Jesus, I may have Gary today, but I will feed nations. And you study the word of God and it's constructing your mind. There is he that stirreth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Ah, so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come. You write it in the name of Jesus. I have no attachment to things. When God brings them, money is a slave and a servant. Never to become a God and a master. I am a giver. And then you study again. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So it's God that can make all grace abound. That means I don't need to worry about how the results will happen. It is God's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest. Are we together? You begin to study. You see. The Bible says love never fails. That means if there is anything that is failing in my life. When I add love to it. I can turn the results around. So you construct your mindset. Let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform. Your environment will start fighting you. Because immediately, your friends and your environment, your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say, "What are, are you the only one who is a Christian? What is all these things? We are, we are talking about all of this. In, I beg, man must walk. And he said, no, sorry, I don't speak like that again. With all due respect, something is happening to me. He said, eh, you... You better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary. They are trying to pull you back. Say the devil is a liar. Say it again. And they will pull you back and say, it's true. Let me go back, Jerry. This koinonia thing, you are just talking like fools. Even God knows. Will I lie? I'm like that. I'm, I'm not. And you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state. While people are watching football, you buy a book, 500 naira, and you sit down. When people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money, God just opens a door, 10,000 naira, and you just say, Ah, my birthday is tomorrow. Kai, will I die like that? Let me enjoy myself. Are we together? Your birthday clothes, 8,000. Whatever else you buy, you cook, and the money has finished. And you feel good about that day and continue suffering. Or someone can say, this is my birthday. I may not be a millionaire overnight, but let me make it the last birthday. When by this time, one year, I should at least be able to have options for the food I eat. 
we don't make that decision we don't study what are you doing i'm browsing something what who is that um, somebody he i mean very powerful is a wonderful christian and he's speaking minded of great people say i beg i want to watch one film it just came out am, am i mocking movies no please don't don't misunderstand me but i'm saying if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development you will never be great I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people they are just people who manipulate the minds of people ministers are very intelligent people it takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we we're coming I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking and I said wow I said really everybody's a public speaker the moment you are a leader in any field you are a public speaker public speaking is all about communicating thoughts it takes intelligence it takes psychology it takes leadership it takes content not just that God sent you and say go to America go to um, whatever and then you go and stand and say well the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now don't worry well, if you like be sleeping while I'm talking you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion especially where you know that there is the lavish anointing of God upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of God there is a, a synergy with your result anybody that listens knows that no 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 this person has paid his price i would be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results say in the name of jesus i receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation i buy the truth and i sell it not hallelujah one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this african trado african mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the bible says and david served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it i'm sent to minister to all men but i always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50. If you are within the range, age range of 15 to 50, you are within my generation of influence. Now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here, I will bless you, but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me. Is that true? Because they grew with that generation. If you're in ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people, you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be in ministry for a long time. If you're in ministry and every of your member is at least 60, 65, I have a very sad news for you. You are not going to last because um, those people are at the level of their life where they are interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say ah you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people i foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever 
I want you to believe what I'm saying. It is true. It is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth. Pay the price now. Pay the price now. You may be laughed at now, but pay the price. Are we blessed? Change your perception. Change your paradigm. Don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is. Or getting a job as wonderful as that is. Pay the price. Pay the price. To build your mind. Then your job. I, I've said it again and again. I'm not necessarily talking about money. But you don't make money off business. You make money off your understanding. You don't become great off the physical things you do. You become great off your understanding. May the Lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of Jesus. You've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great. But the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves. You will see it happen. Yes, you will see it happen. We may not look like it now. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. It says, and it doth not yet appear until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce filled with the holy ghost from age two why because a healthy mindset is the head of that family loving god because you understand the principles that at age 60 you look 30 because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Dula and Hephzibah, unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life. And people ask you, how are you doing it? You say, I can reproduce it again and again. It was not luck. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help me. Grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding. Stop complaining about the physical results you do not see. Brothers and sisters, that should be the least of your concern. Lord, deliver me from a fake life. Are we praying? Deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there. I receive the patience. I receive the patience. I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight. I will not become anointed overnight. I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding. Lift your voice and pray. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God. There is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife, exceptional husband, exceptional career person, exceptional businessman, an exceptional politician. I focus on mental transformation. I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations, everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor. You are small. You are a non-entity. You probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor. Something has told you you will never be a good wife. You will never be a good husband. It could be friends, backgrounds. I'd like you to pray and say, I cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I decree and declare that I am well able, 10 times better. My life has no limitations. My only limitation is the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am limitless. Hallelujah. Listen, don't listen to what I'm saying and think I'm just talking nonsense. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, you'll fail in life. Yes, you will. And you will live an angry and resentful life. Our society is full of very angry people. Do you know, one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges, it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in what? If you rejoice in your certificate, one day it will make you angry, the day you are not promoted. If you rejoice just in your husband alone, your wife alone, your child, your car, your business, all those things, they fluctuate. But it says rejoice in a constant factor called the lord and again i say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bend 
when when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes they say ah these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them they understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit you use it to draw from the wells of salvation it's not circumstances that the bible says the joy of the lord is your strength meaning when i lose joy i lose strength and satan understands this so he will orchestrate it i thought you said you will enter a relationship by january you even open your mouth and told people now is november oh, my sister and you just say hi how about god there are many men in koinonia now when they see me you are already responding to it but the joy of the lord oh lord i give you praise i thank you where is the god that brought the servant of isaac to come and meet rebecca that same God will connect me. Lord, I give you praise. Before the arrival of the man, I continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue. That the day that gentleman sees me, he will never be able to sleep again. Good preparation. What do you do while waiting for your miracle? Among many things, praise and prepare. Mm. Praise and prepare. Is God blessing us? yes you will never and i say it with all humility you'll never see me putting my hand on my chin and say hi life you say why now I say, nigeria you not seeing what is happening i choose to be joyful i choose to make merry in my world there is absolute peace the world you talk about is the one your mindset created oh in my world there is peace and love and joy apostle you see what is going on in this country i know but i know that there is a god in heaven he was not dethroned he's alive hallelujah he's alive apostle are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere oh i understand that as the mountains surround jerusalem there is a construction i am happy joy is a defense you plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it what you used to believe you now stop it and throw it away no be joyful prophesy to your neighbor say be joyful say to another remain joyful amen yes when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter so when you cannot laugh and you are happy before god something is wrong oh god i'm here again Abba. You say, better come and answer me. What is all this thing I'm saying? Is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request? Or is it that Apostle Son is not touching my own? What is all this? I keep writing this thing. And when you, the devil says, please continue. I, I beg you, continue. You frustrate Satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them. He says, what then do I do? It's a sign you are not living in the flesh. Are we together? You get up in the morning and there's no food. And you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says, Pastor, Gary has finished though. They say it with sarcasm. Are, are you, do you have people like that around your life? Yes. They will say it to me, please, prosperity confessor, Gary has finished. There is soup, but no Gary. I tell God there is already soup. Just help us with Gary. They try to mock you. But do you know mockery is a mystery? Every time, listen every time men are mocking you it's a sign something has left heaven and satan is trying to use men to stop it read your bible every time they mocked men when the mockery was at the apex the result was almost arriving when we started out in ministry many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things and the lord told me just continue to rejoice and celebrate and hallelujah look what he's done and will continue to do by his grace make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful apostle nine o'clock my rent must be paid my brother anger will not pay rent your your annoyance will not even add to it so you better be happy because even physically it can make some what is making you joyful like this and you say i'm smiling in the midst of the storm i say storm what storm and the person comes in tell your loved ones to be happy our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress you see somebody 20 years old they tell you he has bp sir what are you thinking about saying my life 
I'm 20, I'm not in a relationship. Like, ah, are you joking? What in the world is this? What's, what's wrong with you? Listen to our character building series. Work on your mind. What did you watch? Which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience? But when you see somebody rejoicing, always happy. You come back from Koinonia, I'm happy. Somebody is grumbling in the car. You just say, well, God bless you. You arrive home, you are happy. What will we eat? Well, there may not be food. And truly, sometimes it can be painful. But Lord, I give you all the praise. How long will I keep dancing for as long as the answer comes? Let me tell you, waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant. I will never have the privilege of having that experience. But one thing I know is that I've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child. For as soon as you travel, travel in joy. Brothers and sisters, the God who promised you will bring it to pass. So, yes. I have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God. I will hold on. If I perish, I perish. If God said it, I believe him. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinonia. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it, no. A day will come. In one month, you will see cars in Koinonia. You'll be like, oh, it's a season. It's not a season. The, if the car is being given to you now your colleagues are saying my brother won't you buy a car don't worry don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere just calm down leave the issue of loan and stay with God take your Okada with honor and give God praise the day to come it will come in a grand style I assure you You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope. At your level, I was worse than how you look now. So you better encourage yourself and say, if I'm at this level and I'm already smiling like this, it means when I get to a level higher than where I am, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Number four. What's the third price? Is the price of being skillful write it down the price of being valuable the price of being skillful Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 it's become an anthem in koinonia the gift of a man and I add the gift of a man that's been identified developed and added to with excellence take note not just the gift of a man the raw material potential gift no sir it won't bring you before great men the gift of a man an ability a potential identified developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value 
you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards ease is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding giveth favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will don muen call you because of your voice have you worked upon yourself what do you know about singing the truth is that many of us at least to an appreciable level we have discovered areas here and there in our lives but the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence everybody shout it after me say competence say it again competence let me tell you something I've learned about competence. Competence defies age, gender, tribal, and racial um, differences and, and all of and sentiments. I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from. I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields. Listen, anything you are doing, if you do not plan to be a leader in that field, don't do it. Are we together? I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in. Whether it is ministry, whether it is business. You may start small, but your, the, those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field. In the academia, the professor collects the highest salary. Why? Because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it. You may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker. But if you have not risen to that level of competence, you may never have the privilege of access. Make up your mind that I will be competent. Say it, I will be competent. Say it again, I must be competent. The law of value. Your value, when developed, decide who pursues you. Your value, when developed, decides who pursues you. Mike Mudok teaches that your, a problem is an invitation for a reward. A problem is an invitation for a reward until there is a problem that you can solve I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you when you are not valuable you will not be a friend to anybody write this down discover and develop problem solving skills Discover and develop problem solving skills. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master. Brothers and sisters, what we do that you call ministry is solving problems. You know, I've said it again and again. Many people get angry when men of God are blessed. Because many people carry 
they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people if they believe that men of God eat the church tithe and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses it may be true for some but it's not so for most men of God become blessed because they are offering value that the value is spiritual in context now I am teaching you is that true I'm reshaping your mind I'm adding value to you the system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value whether you sell it or give it free you are authorized to be rewarded are we together now you only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life whether financial and otherwise and you cannot see the value equivalent so when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates I see the value equivalent that's why we don't harass him if I look at a criminal who is not offering any value yet his bank account is fat then I know that the equation does not balance before you ever criticize a blessed man examine the value now you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what is doing is valuable enough to bring reward but it still does not matter everybody say I will be valuable say it again I will be valuable I will be skillful become a master at something koinonia and wave poverty goodbye become a master at something if I ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something the concept of being multi-talented is good but those who are masters in life are known for something there must be a skill that sets you out then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you are we together now I'm not only a man of God and many other things but most people know me as a man of God and they may think that's all I am and that's all that I do there are many other aspects to my life but there is always a skill that opens the door that skill that brings you to the table of greatness then you leverage upon that and other gifts and talents are now supporting is that true yes you must be valuable now the oil in Nigeria and Africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we we're offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our GDP necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world when you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you may you be valuable being valuable will drive shame out of your life I tell you this being valuable the Bible says study to show yourself approved it says a workman that needed not to be ashamed there is a relationship between ignorance and shame are we together there is a relationship there is a correlation between ignorance and shame those who are angry insulting every blessed person insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings their ability their skill their talent and to invest time resources and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field I've made up my mind that in everything I'm involved in I will be flawlessly competent it's a commitment I've made to myself and I pray that you make that commitment tonight never settle the enemy of your next level is the success of your last level be careful failure does not make people fail it stimulates them to go high but the moment you begin to achieve results there is a chance that you will be complacent I will be valuable become a master solution provider there is no mystery about wealth it's not a miracle it's not magic it's a system a reward system of the kingdom remember that I said your value on its own cannot bless you it must be developed everybody say developed 
there is a season of refining your value one gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk obviously that gentleman will not last one month he will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going you hear people complain why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away and they think the solution is just prayer man of god change my story yes god can change your story but the men of god or the men that come to your church are human beings they respond to value by the time you continue to give people information that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today? Ah, I mean, I can't even start. I mean, it was, it, was, it was strange. And instead of the man of God to be honest enough to admit that and try and go back and trust God to help, he said, you mean it? I mean, that's, that's it. Says, Sir, this message is a, is a bestseller. And then the, mem the person does not come. The moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat, they will leave you. Because they were never loyal to you. They are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation and if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth spiritually and otherwise then there's no reason why they listen to you i've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person well, well just a daft no 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 it takes a lot of study it takes a lot of labor research commitment i'm committed to doing it this is the key to remaining relevant are we together you must be skillful write this scripture down we're not turning for time's sake genesis 41 um okay let's just look at two verses genesis 41 the whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46 that's the whole context from verse 14 to 46 but please give us 14 and 31 this was joseph now the bible says then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh are we together now he began to interpret pharaoh's dream and then to prefer a solution and in verse 33 now therefore let pharaoh look out for a man look at a politician after he finishes marketing himself he said pharaoh it's not like i'm saying i want to be the one but you since you are smart who has committed himself to being that valuable look for a man who is discreet and wise and when you find such a man mm, when you find such a man do what he sees he programmed his own promotion when you find that man this is the level of result that should be given to that man set him over the land of egypt and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has shown you this there is none so discreet and wise everybody say mastery it's leadership this is called leadership pace setting trailblazing that no this is not competition this is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out. Competition is in the realm of mediocres. You never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space. It's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time. You seldom see traffic in the air. There is space for champions. Hallelujah. Say I'm one of them. 
And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as God has showed you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Let's continue reading. Um, Thou shalt immediately be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have, I have said thee this day over all the land of Egypt. Did he ask him what tribe? Did he ask him, Are you a Jew or you are this? You have solved my problem, you have reward. And Pharaoh took off his ring, the ring in his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Go ahead. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. Let's see something interesting that happened now. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of Egypt let's finish it two more verses and Pharaoh called Joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife Asena free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation God is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable god programmed that way not everybody will produce the same result but there must be a token a token a sign that you are going somewhere and joseph went over the land of egypt the last verse how old was he and joseph was what this is somebody's lifetime achievement he did it at age 30. If you got born again at 30, you are behind time. I teach on the graph of life. You can get my message. That's a sign that you need to catch up. And when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the land of Egypt. Your competence can give God space to lift you. Your competence can give God space to lift you. Make up your mind to be valuable. Pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be skillful. Lift your voice and pray. Plant in me a resentment for mediocrity. Plant in me a resentment for average. Being a local champion, being satisfied by little results, being celebrated by mediocres, competing myself with people who are not even doing anything. I receive grace. Are you praying? In the name of Jesus, I declare, I decree and I declare, go ahead and pray. Lord, I will rise. In business, I set myself to become a leader in that field. In the mighty name of Jesus. In my career, I will rise to a managerial level. I will not stop till I reach the apex. I will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background. If you're a northern and pray hard, pray twice. In the name of Jesus, the mediocrity that comes with my territory, I, I declare that I break through it. If I need to take certifications, I set myself to personal development. If I need to upgrade myself in knowledge, I receive grace. If I need seminars and training, I receive grace. If I need to submit myself consciously for mentorship, I receive grace. Grace to follow those who through faith and patience i will not waste my day again i will turn my laptop to a university i will turn my android device to a university i take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business i find out the leaders in my field and i press to know what they know hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of Mark says, all men seek for thee. Please, if you truly are part of this ministry, resent mediocrity. Are we together? Resent mediocrity. 
doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass up, graduated with whatever. You can re-engineer yourself. Re-educate yourself. Then you will change your finances. Then you will change that talk, that, that, that statements they always make. They will continue to jeer at you and say, Saul killed 1,000. David killed 10,000. Competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres. There is a realm you must rise to. Repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance. Before you take out any physical step again, go for knowledge. Number four, pray in the spirit for one minute. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your word is changing me. I receive grace. Hallelujah. The fourth prize, and we'll be done for today. Please, I want to have everybody's attention because what I'm about to teach you is a very big secret. Most of you may think you know it, but I want you to listen to me with your spirit, listen with your heart. The price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life. The price of building quality relationships. Relationships are advantageous connections. Connections. Relationships are advantageous connections. The easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships. I've taught you this. I'm repeating it so that you will understand. The easiest way to be blessed in life, brothers and sisters, is through relationship. Relationships are powerful. Relationships are irrefutable. There is no champion without quality relationships. Relationships are currencies. They can buy anything money can buy. Anything money can buy, relationships can buy it. The only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it. That human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it. I've said it again. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not working in wisdom. Now, money is only one of many currencies. Relationship being the highest at the cadre. Second only to godliness and your spiritual connection. Let me tell you something. Of all the currencies that men use to purchase results in life, physical money, notes, currencies is the least of them. There are seven currencies. I hope that by God's grace, I'll teach it next year. Seven currencies we use to purchase results in life. Everything in life is bought. It's just that money is not the only currency. Relationship is a priceless currency. Higher than gold. Higher than the dollar. Learn this. God called Abraham alone. And Lot, who was related, went with him. That was the only thing Lot did. And he became stupendously wealthy. Relationships can determine the next course of your results. And lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime. Please, I want you to learn this. The presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success. Lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime. You are one quality relationship, underline quality. You are one quality relationship away from your next level of results. Believe me on this. You are one quality relationship away from the next level of your results. You know all of this already. My emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships, but to be able to guide us on principles. I've noticed believers know very little about relationships this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding 
two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives there must be similarity you must believe similar things about god about life about money about family it qualifies you to be friends second scripture very very touching scripture proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 proverbs chapter 18 and 24 it tells us that he who desires friends you must sow that seed proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest meaning that until you sow that seed there is no harvest of relationship it says a man that had friends must first show himself what friendly and trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvests we must sow the seeds Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 read with me one to read he that walketh with the wise shall do what but a friend of foolish friends, what will he get it didn't say foolish people don't have a future that's not what the bible is saying the bible says you are a product of your environment he that walks with the wise shall himself be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please write this down everyone relationships do not maintain themselves relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves apostle people don't like me show me the seeds you are sowing the seeds of friendship are we together now apostle nobody wants to walk this koinonia people serve they say greet one another they don't even greet me no sir how to maintain relationships this is the crux of the teaching how to maintain relationships i want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving we're going to read so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound competitive jealousy destroys you believers are very very competitive people jealous people you bought this car i buy it too you bought this suit i buy it too if 
you know, I'm not just saying it for Koinonia alone, but this is something I've observed. This is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide, especially in the African continent, we are obsessed with the passion to prove points. And so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition. Men of God compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plague competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this Proverbs 27 verse 4. Many of us fall sick being envious of people. Listen. Very, very powerful description. Look up please. It says wrath is cruel. That means it's not good. Don't do it. Anger is outrageous. But compared, you know, in comparison, who is able to stand before envy? In other words, envy is worse than anger. Wrath is cruel. Anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Envious people never get results in their lives. They live their lives in bitterness and pain. Could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships? Last scripture, Proverbs 14 verse 30. Okay, we already have that. We read it already. Proverbs 27 verse 4. We'll just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient until the word of god manifests in my life i reject jealousy i cast away jealousy from my life lift your voice and pray in one minute it will sting your ego but brothers and sisters this is god speaking pray the spirit of competitive jealousy I take it away from my life please pray envious of my workers at work envious of my business contemporaries no envy is sin it's not just bad it is sin sin against yourself you depress yourself there are many people that don't sleep in the night this lady was my junior in school she's now married and I'm not married you are envious this person I was the person that that trained this person he's now a millionaire i'm no longer i'm a pastor this is my son it's all those jealousy and envy kill it now lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus i come against it satan you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships i was surprised when i was studying this i found out that a, a research was done and it was it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking backbiting and gossip so the second point is avoid gossip backbiting and evil speaking the Bible calls it ill speaking. Statistically, you can go and check it. The top reasons why relationships break. Give us Titus chapter 3 verse 2 please. And then Proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19. Avoid gossip, backbiting, speaking evil. Unfortunately, and with all due respect to the body of Christ. For some reason, the church in Nigeria, I don't know if it's because of our African background, we are experts at gossip, experts at backbiting, experts at speaking evil. To speak evil of no man, are we there? To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. To speak evil of no man. It is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people. There are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong. 
are we together you speak evil of people no. we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is God speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit I'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 Proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up I'll read it these six things does the Lord hate so God hates it these six things does the Lord hate seven are an abomination unto him we're reading to 19 number one a proud look number two a lying tongue number three hands that shed innocent blood number four a heart that devised wicked imagination there is such a heart feet that be swift in running into mischief 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and the last of them is what he that soweth discord it didn't say among men among who you find them in every church and every ministry experts are joining the heads of nice people together hey jimmy i i wouldn't have told you but I've, I've, do you know have you noticed that every time koinonia comes there's a way pastor alpha looks at you <laughs> i will just you about it later it's devilish it's devilish it's devilish you are sowing seeds of discord there are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them there are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced adam and eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice you must be careful third voice is ruin quality relationships how many of you god wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and say sorry how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord sorry i i overheard somewhere that you like this lady are you are you blind i just came to advise you are you blind this lady that has lived like this, she was my neighbor growing up. So it's, it's something I know. Is that how you hate your destiny? And the brother goes back. Be careful because when we pray during miracle services, we pray very wild prayers and tell God to bulldoze any and everything standing on the way of people's progress. And you must be careful that that's not you. Because the prayer will be answered anyway. Are we together? He that soweth discord. Do you know that gossip can be habitual? Meaning even if there is nothing to say, because you have trained your mind, you will always, you just see somebody pass and say, ah, let me tell you something. I didn't plan to talk, but no. Don't laugh. Almost everybody is guilty of this. So when it's time to pray, will cry before God first for yourself and say Lord I'm guilty I am very very guilty are we together yes worship team standing to worship I you see how this guy is standing that, that's the guy I'm telling you hey you don't know that guy I saw him around that area yesterday he likes it lady he likes it what is your business for heaven's sake what is your business are we together yeah what is your business gossip backbiting ill-spoken words you just hear that somebody is rising you say who who is rising no i need to do something about it don't become like that ill-spoken words the appetite you see every time you talk bad about people i want you to remember that you are destroying god's creation you must stop it 
if put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying when you tear down people and destroy them how many people tear down men of god you don't think about their churches what happens to their members while you are destroying them what happens when you are talking ill of a pastor what happens when you are tearing him down what happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife think of what happens to her reputation it affects her leadership where experts are doing it it's a habit that I trust that God will break from us because many of us this is what drives friends from us come pastor Alpha God brings your destiny helper he holds your hand in two weeks in two weeks everybody knows everything about you ah I came to apostle's house I saw him counting dollars don't, don't mind that quietness so oh, apostle is rich you think it's an information you are giving and God is saying you see this person you are not a candidate for my help carry your trouble and go away and say ah but God is going to help me no we have destroyed our lives destroyed opportunities how many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves they have it's an obsession if there is nothing to talk about you can even be the person to act the drama yourself I beat my wife I just want you to know honestly and you see listen the thing about gossip and ill speaking please listen this is a lesson for all of us to learn the thing about gossip is it is like lost whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to including a child imagine me now coming to talk assuming pastor alpha has a child that is grown but because there is an appetite you are walking in a house and you are now talking kite boy this is your father now you are poisoning the mind of the child what do you think happens now are we together we must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip romans chapter 16 verse 17 please give it to us quickly gossip terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy avoid them avoid them listen hold on let me teach you something be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor a typical example is workers people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens you say hey, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 no. there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now 
It says, love does not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked or anger. If you are truly walking in love, I don't care what your background is, you will not be easily angered. There are people who get angry very easily. Very easily. Bros, how now? You say, me. I'm 10 years older than you. I am. Please don't think that because me, on a very good day, won't you be saying, Bonnie? easily offended you see offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself when you judge things from a faulty perception things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation offense refuse to be offended refuse to be offended there will be occasion for offense in every relationship from a marriage relationship a business relationship ministerial relationship you must make up your mind as a choice that the blessings that i seek to receive from the relationships god is bringing in my life is greater than any offense offense destroys because you see when you are offended one of the many ways you act is speech and every time you speak with a heart of offense usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation. You will talk in the flesh. You can make it means that you cannot withdraw again. Many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous, they would have regained it. Many people have lost business opportunities because of that. Offense is an advice. It's an encouragement. The Bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended let me tell you you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense especially if you are a leader people do things that should get me offended every day i do things that should get people offended every day an example is what i'm teaching now are we together now there are things that get people offended you must make up your mind that I will not be offended. How many men of God get offended and they can't preach? They get offended at home. They come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children. The kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family. So you know that this, is a, this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit offense makes you small offense makes you cheap offense reduces your worth let me tell you something about offense most of those who offend you or they know they offended you the goal is that their joy is in your reaction most of those who offend offend intentionally but when you grow above it you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living after this service now, on your way home, an angry driver, an angry man, something will happen that will offend you. But you must make up your mind and say, Satan, you are a liar. I already see your hand. I will not be offended. Say in the name of Jesus, I reject offense. Is God speaking to us? Number four, how do we maintain relationships? Practice forgiveness. Practice forgiveness. Mark chapter 11 verse 25 then Ephesians 4 32 please give it to us Mark 11 25 practice forgiveness I don't know one relationship including the one of you and God that can thrive without forgiveness it's not God you are forgiving God is forgiving you all the time because there are people who really are angry with God okay I forgive you God let's get back into the relationship and when ye stand praying, most prayer warriors miss this. Let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives. It's not all about demons. And when ye stand praying, what is the rule? Forgive, comma, if ye have ought against any, that your Father in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. It's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts. Some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane 
embarrassment. Sam, laughing at me. Pastor Alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching. And you write everything. Protocol department. <laughs> Their own star, star, star. They offended me. Ushers, I was falling before everybody and they were watching me. I injured myself and you write it down. Then you leave everything and say, Father, don't you know that I'm human? And God says, really? It's like a small child that begs you for something. Then you give him and say, give back and he refuses. That's exactly what we do. You can never live in this life without forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is giving. Forgiveness is giving. It is giving pardon and mercy. Forgiveness. A disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving. If you are not a forgiver, you are not a giver. Not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed. It's not just refusing seed. Forgiveness. But let me balance very quickly. You don't forgive just to make peace. Forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness. But the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward. Because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it. Let me be very honest and let me balance. Forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance, a willingness to turn away. Forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance. It is useful to you. Let me show you what offense does. Um, can I use someone? Sam, please come. Watch this. This is what offense does. I want to move forward, but I think Sam is standing my way. And so I'm trying to push him. Will I move forward holding him? I'm trying to hold Sam. I can't move forward myself. This is what forgiveness is. He can be there, not even deserving it. But I release him so that I can move forward. I can leave him and his trouble there. If he accepts that he is wrong and turns, then we make peace and we can work together. If he refuses, I still forgive so that I can move forward. Let me tell you, the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended the person who was offended is the one who is most wounded it is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset so your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive as a leader people will offend you every day people will do wrong things every day you must forgive Hallelujah. Everybody say, I receive grace to forgive. Say, I let go everyone I'm holding in my hands. Holding people. Hold them in your heart. I will never forgive my mother except I may have said my own. And you can never receive blessing. I will never forgive my father for what my father has done. If I have a knife, I will kill him by myself and say, Daddy, die. I'm the one killing you. I will never forgive that person who raped me when I was four years old. I will never forgive that, uh, what they call it now, that brother. He went out with me and broke and scattered my heart. Please forgive so that you can move forward. Forgive so that you can move forward. Turn it into prayer in one minute. Lord, I'm tired of holding people. I release right now I let go that boss in the name of Jesus I release my husband I release my wife I release my co-worker I release my business partner I release the man of God I release my head of department I release my escorts I release the members in my department I release Joshua Selman make sure you pray I release everyone who has offended me because I want to move forward. I want to move forward. Practice forgiveness. Hallelujah. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave us. Very quickly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. 
okay Ephesians 4 verse 32 is there and then give us Luke chapter 6 verse 37 Luke 6 37 let's hurry up Luke 6 37 Luke chapter 6 verse 37 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged in other words every time you judge people you are scheduling seasons for yourself condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven make sure you practice this make sure you practice this number five very quickly how do i mean quality relationships be tolerant be tolerant forgiveness is different from tolerance forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change you have to incorporate it as part of that person's living there are people i wish i would tell you everybody around you will change there are people who will not change so you switch from forgiveness to tolerance you accommodate that limitation in their life factor it and build a system around it is god speaking to us yes i have many friends all kinds of friends and just like me they are very funny people everybody has all kinds of attributes the same way i am to them too but it takes tolerance there are some things in me unfortunately may not change tolerance you don't you today i like everybody around me to talk but say i don't talk you don't need forgiveness what do you need tolerance. or you you talk too much i just ask you a question where is where is uh, my trouser you say uh, the other one i didn't ask you about what happened where is my trouser please tolerance your destiny helper may be a talkative if you are tolerant to the talkativeness then you receive the breakthrough everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you if everybody was like me the world would be a terrible place you would think the world would be a nice place no you don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life this world will be a sad place <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping what a world I am so happy for people who are not me they add flavor I benefit from the joy of them not being me you must have a high degree of tolerance Colossians chapter 3 please help us 12 and 13 Colossians chapter 3 is called forbearance you must tolerate people put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave so also do ye forbearing one another you have business partners you need forbearance are we together you are in your office working you need forbearance in a ministry like this you need forbearance everybody cannot be you brothers and sisters learn this Oh God, change them. Wonderful prayer. But they have their wills. If they don't change, does that mean you will not move forward? Tolerance. Number six. The sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship. You must be a contributor. There are parasitic relationships. Relationships are meant for mutual benefit. Maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution. I cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life. Ejimi is my friend. He contributes greatly in my life. I contribute greatly in his life. So there is a basis for continuity. Are we together now? If you are not valuable to a relationship, that relationship's lifespan is very small. It will never. Please hear this. This is true for marriage. It is true for business. It is true for ministry. There are many people who complain and say, Joshua Selman doesn't want to be my friend, doesn't want to be this. And I say, no, no, I want to be your friend. It's just that I am passionate about value. Be a contributor. 
Money is not the only thing to contribute. Love, kindness, godliness. Are we together now? There are so many things to bring into a relationship. Not everybody is looking for money in a relationship. There are people who have conquered that realm. They need love. They need value. They need understanding. They need help. You must learn this. If you want a guy to come into your life, what value are you going to bring? I say, guy, what value are you going to bring? Even the church and Christ, truly speaking, doesn't need anything from us. But because of his love, he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something. That's why when we worship and praise him, is we, 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 we're not necessarily adding anything to him, but he has limited himself that way so that he can give us room for expression relationships must be mutually beneficial if there are five people in a business and only two are running that business they are the two who will be the closest of friends the rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value please i want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much the reason why even in the house of god it's true that we love everybody unconditionally but we are not committed to everybody at the same level it is according to contribution say amen you must be a contributor if you are helping me spiritually you will be close to me if you are helping me financially you will be close to me if you are helping me in terms of the love for god if you are helping me fulfill my assignment you will be close to me if you are not doing any of this i love you but you can't expect to be close to me the same way if i'm not contributing meaningfully to your life you love me but i can't be close to you relationships are based on contributions i want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad he said no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and you say lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what the apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what I will get in as much as I have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of God as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season christ died for us proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships, not love, really, all kinds of relationships, and the ease with which they get offended. No, sir. 
if five people come into your life not love relationship now necessarily five people come into your life none of them can stand two weeks the problem is you not them are we together hatred stareth up strife but love covereth how many sins that means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love the secret to peace all kinds John 13 35 John 13 35 then give us first John 4 20 first John 4 20 John 13 35 John 13 verse 35 by this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a christian name if ye have love not for god love for one another loving god is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love god that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love god that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of loving one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself i cannot hate anybody in the house of god no impossible impossible truly speaking i'm not just saying it i live a very peaceful life <sighs> apostle why are you angry can you no i've been delivered. been delivered i live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers the workers in this ministry know with all humility that I love them with all my heart. I love the leaders. They know it. I'm lavish about it. I love them with all my heart. How could I ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart? This is why some of us never get the anointing. This is why many of us never command results. Our hearts are full of hatred. There is always one bad story to say. No. First John 4 verse 20 and then we round up. First John 4 verse 20. God has spoken to us tonight. If a man say, even if his name is Joshua Selman, if Joshua Selman says, I love God, like many Christians say, and hated his brother. He didn't say hated. He didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did. He just said if he hated his brother, please read on if you're a Christian. What is he? He didn't say he's an angry person and God understands. That person is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen, how can he love God that he had not seen? Church, we must not only love Jesus, we must love ourselves. More pastors who en we experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving God and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why I honor the Lord for the ministers around I mean Reverend Dr. Tende is here God bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time I see them come visit like this I am very blessed love there are times I pick up my phone and I just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them how are you how is the work the Lord bless you the Lord honor you there are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. As, Has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you. But when you had privilege, the number he had then that you had, you did not invest in it. And now he has changed his life. Only those who blessed him have the new line. You are not part of them. And you are angry and grumbly and say all these pastors. I remember when God started helping me, a lot of people were offended and said, what is all this thing? Eh? I tried to call apostle, he cannot call you. Call you, say protocol, he doesn't know me. And I said, you can imagine. Two years, you have never asked whether God, whether koinonia people are eating, 
where the, how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say look I have Bishop Oedipo's number C, Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call, he says, see all these organ men of God, I will not pick if I'm here. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please, don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. A little prayer. Man of God, how are you, sir? Just to find out. Mommy, how are you? daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it even if they don't have time to reply they are noting it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have say but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic greetings here my name is this these are my problems you just listen bless you and I say, what? Just like that? No. There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you. My mother has come again, no, honestly. Um, my father has come again, no. My sister, remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. invest in relationships you must love brothers and sisters I stand by the integrity of God's word and I tell you this if you practice these things before last koinonia it would have changed your life there are some of you this is what you need this is the revelation you need to enter the next level it's not like the job cannot come there are many people now that admission will start you're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people sir i remember it's me that sent you cv and says is it because i'm coming for koinonia and you are seeing me like that you've never done anything you've never said take five for life and all of that no 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 sir the, the uh, just to let you know that uh, by god's grace i'll be finishing now <laughs> you promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for for project you didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call, write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you. Because when a man loves you, everything he has loves you too. If a millionaire loves you, his money loves you too. An anointed man loves you, his anointing will love you. There are anointings that reject people. Yes. That's why people don't receive. We are going to pray and you are going to cry to the Lord and say, Lord, the answer to my challenge will have to be one of these five. Either I have not paid the price knowing you or I have not genuinely submitted to authority. I have not committed myself to mental transformation. I have not paid the price to be skillful and valuable or I have not paid the price to build and maintain quality relationships. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank the Lord for the word you've heard tonight. Lift your voice and begin to bless him. Extraordinary results. Results that defy limitation. These are the systems of the kingdom we engage in. Are you praying? Are you praying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to pray. I've listed these areas. You know the areas where you honestly need to flog it out with God. In the next one minute, please swallow your pride and cry to God and say, I obtain mercy. I obtain mercy. Lord, I have not paid the price to know you, 
I am lazy spiritually and otherwise I have not committed myself to pressing into the things of God there's too much distraction in my life and I make up my mind that I will change from today lift your voice and pray Lord I've not committed myself to transiting mentally I'm still carrying age-old ideas that are destroying me ideas that are responsible for my pain ideas that are responsible for the misery in my life I'm a product of my mindset I have by a wrong mindset driven good people in my life driven good opportunities in my life lift your voice and pray I receive grace I receive grace I receive grace no more laziness from tonight I commit myself to personal development Lord I receive grace to be skillful I receive grace to be skillful I receive grace to be skillful Lord I receive grace to be excellent grace to be competent grace to be excellent grace to be competent grace to be excellent grace to be competent finally pray for relationships Lord all the areas that you have touched tonight I receive grace I declare that I'm free the Bible says he who the son of man sets free is free indeed I declare that I'm free from offense I'm free from bitterness I'm free from gossiping backbiting ill-spoken words against people I only seek the good of another in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost I let go every offense I make up my mind that I'm pressing to the place of destiny and in the name of Jesus no power of hell will stop me hallelujah one last prayer point father every dimension of result I should have entered that lack of observing these truths have kept me I declare that your mercy reopens that door for me go ahead lift your voice and pray I decree and I declare the mercy of God again I decree and declare the mercy of God again I decree and declare the mercy of God again are you praying I decree and declare relationships that I've lost because I did not this understanding I decree and declare by the mercy of God they are reopened business opportunities financial opportunities ministerial connections strategic relationships connections that would have lifted me bailed me out of trouble stop shame from my life hallelujah i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you too one more time i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to survive it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me i need you to survive lord i stand before your people and we declare connecting with all those who are following from the nations of the earth and lord we declare that we are ready to put these truths to work in the name of jesus we lay our pride tonight we humble ourselves before you the lord of glory you have brought your word to lift us the bible says he sent forth his word we receive the sent word into our hearts we commit ourselves to applying the changes that are required and lord we declare that your grace and your mercy will back us up let there be results in our lives we decree and declare that between now and the end of this year let our lives command strange results in the name of jesus christ all of the limitations in our lives that grant satan and demon spirits access to live and destroy us we declare by the blood of jesus that they are closed and closed forever in the name of jesus christ amen and amen everyone please keep standing you're here tonight and um whilst you were hearing me speak the holy spirit was speaking to you and saying that you need to make your ways right or especially you are here and you have discovered that 
offense is eating you up. It has killed your spiritual life. You literally backslid just because of offense and bitterness and hatred and you're finding it difficult to let go. You are here. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to make up your life. You want to take away these things and say, Lord, I need to start afresh. If you're here inside, outside, any of the overflows, please, I want you to make your way very quickly. We have one minute for you. Wherever you are, make your way to the front. Thank you, Jesus. Someone is responding to this call. God bless you. Someone is responding to this call. Quickly, please, if you're coming, make way to Jesus. Go ahead, make your way. Lord, I want to make it right with you tonight. I can't live my life like this. I came for koinonia. I may deceive others, but I cannot deceive myself. Lord, I'm ready to lay everything down. Everything down. Go ahead. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're still coming outside. Please double up and come. Double up and come. Those online, connect with us wherever you are. And pray the prayer as I lead God's people to pray. Please come, direct them. Direct them. God bless you. I see people coming. Make your way to the front very quickly. Hallelujah. Please come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Thank you. Most of you uh, have given your life to Christ. You are rededicating your life. Some of you are giving your life to Jesus for the first time. Doesn't matter what category you are part of. Please mean this with all your heart. Mean this with all your heart. Jesus is here. And let this be a new beginning for you. Say in the name of Jesus. I lay aside every offense. I lay aside every bitterness every anger every unforgiveness i declare tonight that jesus is lord of my life i hand over my life and everything about me to jesus i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from tonight i am a changed person from tonight the love of god dwells in me the spirit of god dwells in me no more bitterness no more hatred in the name of jesus the power of sin and satan is broken over my life forever in jesus name lord jesus thank you for these ones some of them are handing their lives totally to you and some of them are making up their minds to let go every offense and everything that has held them i decree and declare that honor their decisions and I pray that from tonight, your life will skyrocket to a new dimension of achievement. In the name of Jesus, you will love Jesus and hold on to him, never to replace him by anything and anyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for making this decision. Please follow the lady waving her hands. She's smiling at you. And you have a few details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you and thank you very much. Let's honor them. Koinonia, thank you so, so much. Dearly beloved. I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata ba kato skoto brekete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.